Welcome to part 4 of a multi-part guide to CCP Games' long-lived MMO, EVE Online. In today's video, I'm going to be covering everything that you'll need to know for piloting your internet spaceship. From the absolute basics to the more advanced concepts, I'm going to go in-depth on how you can get the most out of your EVE experience as a new pilot in New Eden. As always, if you missed any of the previous episodes in this series, you can click on the annotations on screen now to be taken to an earlier video. Now the first time that you step into the cockpit of one of EVE's many spacecraft, you may feel somewhat of a disassociation between the controls at your fingertips and the spaceship that you're supposed to be piloting. I'm not gonna lie, when I first got behind the metaphorical wheel of an EVE spaceship, I really felt no connection whatsoever between myself and what I was supposed to be flying. The controls honestly felt quite clunky, and I was more than a bit disappointed that I couldn't plug in a joystick and throw about my zippy little frigate pitching and turning back and forth, speeding through space and channeling my inner F-14 fighter pilot. You may have been enticed into EVE by a jazzy trailer showing fleets of ships hurtling about engaged in action-packed white knuckle edge of your seat combat, akin to something straight out of Top Gun. But in this fictional universe, you're not Tom Cruise, and this is not a pretend fighter pilot academy. Although I'm not saying that this is in any way a bad thing. Although I do wish that CCP's marketing team would do something with their gameplay trailers that's a little more representative of their actual product, which, while certainly not a flight simulator, is in my opinion bloody fantastic. The fact that flying an EVE Online isn't a test of your fast twitch muscle fibers is not a bad thing at all. On the contrary, I see it as one of the game's strengths. Flying in New Eden, you are the captain, the man on the bridge and in command of your very own starship. In fact, in the game's lore, each and every ship from the smallest of frigates to gigantuan dreadnoughts and titans are manned by crews of hundreds in addition to yourself. You are the Captain James T. Kirk, the Commander William Adama, the Colonel Lionel Pentagast, sitting in the captain's chair and in charge of your ship and its crew. You're not the hotshot solo pilot pulling 4G inverted dives, you're sitting back and giving orders, the man making the tough decisions. And yes, this is admittedly a slightly cheesy analogy, but it's still a fun and surprisingly accurate way to picture your role in flying internet spaceships in EVE. Action stations, action stations. Set condition one throughout the ship. This is not a drill. Repeat. Action stations, action stations. Set condition one throughout the ship. Okay, so let's say that you are logging into EVE here for the very first time uh, and obviously everything around you here is not going to be feeling super familiar to you at this point. Uh, I guess EVE is a game that a lot of new players traditionally do probably have a little bit of trouble getting adjusted to. Uh, so what we're going to do here is just go over some of the really basic controls here for piloting our Caracal. Uh, now some of this is covered in the tutorials so I won't spend uh, too long on it here, uh, but very briefly we can right click on items in space uh, and also in the overview and get this context menu here which we can then choose different actions uh, so orders to issue to our crew so let's say go ahead and tell our crew to orbit the citadel at 1000 meters here they will go ahead now and do that uh, we can also get the same sort of thing by left clicking and holding on items in space and again also in the overview uh, and what we do is we mouse over uh, an action that we might want to take so again like orbit for example uh, and we can also with the orbit we can drag that out same goes for keep at range here so we can 
change the distance on that. Uh, so let's say pull our orbit out here to 8,000 meters, and we just release the mouse button to uh, to activate that. Uh, but I like to have as many of these actions as is possible being controlled by a hotkey. Uh, because obviously that's a lot quicker for me to access in the heat of a battle or if I'm say running a PvE site and someone uh, warps in on me and I just want to get out of there I can obviously warp away a lot quicker if that is on a hotkey and not something that I have to select from a menu of some description. Uh, so let's go ahead and hit the escape key here. Uh, and we're going into shortcuts and uh, interestingly enough most of the stuff we want is under combat. Uh, so go to your combat tab here uh, and I'm going to go ahead and change a little bit of this just to something that makes sense for me. Uh, you can obviously choose to change it as well or you know keep it the same uh, but just familiarize yourself with what these are and uh, get used to using them because uh, that will really uh, pay dividends to you later on when uh, when you start getting into uh, a bit more advanced things say and if you've been using hotkeys from the start it's just going to come very naturally to you. Uh, so let's go ahead and change the approach hotkey here. I'm going to put that on S. Uh, I'm then going to go and change orbit. I'm going to go put that on Q. Uh, then I'll scroll down to the bottom here and warp to. I'm going to go ahead and change that to W. Uh, now the rest I'm going to leave as default but we'll just go over them here very quickly. So we've got Align 2 is on A, Approach is on S, Dock Jump Activate is on D, Keep at Range is on E, Orbit is on Q and Warp 2 is on W. Uh, and that is pretty much around like the WASD keys which uh, you know obviously used for a lot of other video games. Uh, so that sort of feels pretty comfortable and familiar for me uh, to just be resting my hand over those keys there and that way I can quickly access all of my ship's controls. Uh, so to use our hotkeys what we do is go back to our game window here and we click on things in the overview here. So if I click on the citadel and click orbit uh, we're now going to orbit the citadel. Uh, if I click an E we're going to now keep at range if I click an S, click an S, we are now approaching the Citadel. Uh, or if I clicked and press D, we would then go and dock at the Citadel. Uh, but let's go ahead and warp away to an asteroid belt. So if we click and W, we will now warp okay. off to the Citadel. And that's obviously a lot quicker for us to access than on a menu, like I said earlier. Uh, now, something to remember about your default ranges. Uh, you can set default ranges in here. If you go right, right click and then set default range, you can then go and set any range in here for your default orbit, uh, your default keep at range, and also your default warp to distance. Now, your default warp to distance, that will, whatever you set that to, that will just uh, remain at that. So let's say set it to 10k here or 10,000 meters. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Uh, now orbit, we can go and set an orbit range uh, and a keep it range range uh, and this will actually save directly to our hull type that we are sitting in. So at the moment I'm sitting in a caracal and what I'm going to do is set my caracal to uh, orbit and keep it range at roughly where I want to be if I'm in an, in an engagement. Uh, and for a caracal, this is kind of a kitey cruiser I suppose you could say. I'm, I'm using a long range missile system here in light missiles, uh, MWD and point. So I'm going to want to orbit out at about, well about 20k. Uh, now because my MWD is going to pull my orbit a little bit further, I'm going to go and set my orbit to 17 and a half kilometers or 17,500 meters. Uh, then I'm going to go and set my keep at range range to 19 and a half kilometers or 19,500 meters. Uh, so go ahead and set that. And now this is now saved. If you see if I keep at range on this asteroid here, it will then go ahead and keep at range concentrated veldspar. And it says 19k, but it's actually 19 and a half k. 
Uh, and yeah, like I said, it's going to save to my caracal. So anytime I get in a caracal, not necessarily this caracal, but just any caracal, uh, my default orbit and my default keep at range distance is going to already be set to light missile optimal range, which is I'm never going to fly anything other than a light missile caracal, pretty much. Uh, so, you know, if you've got your favorite blaster frigate or your uh, favorite uh, kitey whatever, you can go ahead and save the default ranges for that. And anytime you get in that ship, uh, you're going to be able to, in a fight, access uh, or get into, you know, get into your default or get into your ideal fighting range very, very quickly or a lot quicker than just using this menu here. Uh, and yeah, that is all of our hotkeys there now completely set up. Let's talk about tactical locations. Tactical locations or tacks are essentially a particular type of bookmark which come in four different flavors. Safes, Insta Docks, Insta Warps and General Tax. Saving a large collection of all of these types of bookmarks is going to go a long way toward keeping your skies safe in your journeys throughout New Eden. So let's start by talking about safes. Safes are locations that cannot be found by another player or at least can't be found without some difficulty and a certain degree of effort on the part of the hunter. You can create a safe by simply warping between two locations and dropping a bookmark mid-warp where you can then warp back to. You can easily save your bookmarks by pressing Ctrl B on your keyboard and then pressing the submit button on the new pop-up window that's just appeared, which will then save a bookmark in the point in space where your ship happens to be at the time you press to the submit key. This newly saved location is your safe, where you can't be found by another player unless he spends four hours trying to drop a bookmark in the exact spot that you did, or he uses combat probes to scan you down, in which case you just get the hell out of there. For those of you who aren't familiar with combat probes, I'll quickly explain. They work in exactly the same way as ordinary probes, only you need to launch them from an expanded probe launcher, and they're able to scan things like player ships, drones and structures, as well as all of the usual things. To avoid getting combat probed, set up multiple safes that you can bounce between. By moving from safe to safe, never staying in one place for too long, you can avoid detection as the scanner just won't get the time to get a lock on you. Or if you have a cloak fitted, you can simply activate your ship's cloaking device, in which case you are literally invisible, both to scanners and to the naked eye, and you cannot be found unless another player or foreign object gets to within 2,000 meters of you, in which case you will be decloaked and become discoverable. In all systems that you are operating in outside of HiSec, you'll want to create multiple safes in for this reason. If you are really paranoid, you can also create what's called a deep safe by creating two safes that are aligned between separate points and then creating a third safe between the two that you just created. This third safe is your deep safe and is now virtually impossible for anyone to find unless they manage to combat probe you whilst you are at the location. Something that you'll be doing right from day one in EVE, no matter what career path you've chosen to head down, will be docking at stations and more specifically at trade hubs. Trade hubs are where all the game's currency is funneled as players go to market loaded with expensive goods for selling or leave the market laden with expensive purchases. And of course in true EVE style, this attracts pirates and mercenaries wanting to steal your stuff. Now at first, you're probably not going to have anything to worry about as when you're just starting out, you're likely not going to have anything that's worth stealing. 
But as you progress in the game and begin to accrue some amount of wealth, you're going to want to have a safe way of docking and undocking from potentially camp stations. And that is where Insta Docks and Insta Warps come in. Warp drive active. So how do we create an Insta Dock bookmark? Well, it's pretty simple. We just go ahead and undock from the station here. Uh, and when we undock, what we're going to do is stop at zero on the station. Uh, to do this, we can press control and space. So uh, when we undock, we're gonna control space. And that is going to stop our ship here at zero on the station. And what we'll do is go ahead and press control B. And we're going to save a bookmark here in my InstaDoc folder. Go away, please. Uh, so in my InstaDoc folder, we're going to create a Jita InstaDoc. And there we go. There is our InstaDoc. You can see we are at zero on the station. Uh, so to use this InstaDoc, when we come into the Jita system here, we're going to warp directly to our InstaDoc bookmark at zero and then we will guarantee that we land on the station at zero and then can immediately dock. Whereas if we were to go and warp directly to the station, we're actually going to land slightly off of the station and there is a chance that someone may be able to basically bump us off of the station and then we do become vulnerable and there is a chance that someone may be able to, well, destroy us. But by using our InstaDoc bookmark, we're going to guarantee that we land at zero and then can dock immediately. Now to create an Insta Warp, we simply undock from the station again. Uh, to do this though, we're gonna to want to be in a very fast ship or, you know, as fast as we can manage. Uh, so I have fitted up this Condor here, uh, which is, you know, a pretty accessible ship. It's a T1 frigate. Uh, pretty much any character will be able to train this uh, unless you're on one of the new free-to-play characters that isn't a Kaldari but in that case you know just use your uh, racial frigate for that uh, and I have put on here some small auxiliary thrusters uh, which will make me go even quicker also some overdrive injectors and of course a micro warp drive uh, and all of this is super cheap to put together like this is under a million isk for all of this here uh, so again very accessible price wise as well uh, so let's go ahead and undock here now when we undock we're going to want to make sure that we don't get bumped on the undock which can sometimes happen in a busy trade hub like Jita so let's uh, hope that doesn't happen or we are going to have to redock and do this again micro warp drive on and let's hope we don't run into anyone. It doesn't look like we have. That's good. Okay, so now we're just going to go ahead and move off in a straight line here and just go out to around about a thousand kilometers here. Okay, so you can see we are out a little further than intended here. Out now at about 2700 kilometers. Uh, but that's okay. When you're creating your Insta Warp, you can't really go too far out. Uh, but let's go ahead and now drop our Insta Warp bookmark. So we're going to go ahead and drop a Jita Insta Warp. There we go. And you can see that trailing off behind us there, our Insta Warp. We might as well go ahead and uh, stop our ship here now. Uh, now to use the Insta Warp, it's pretty simple. You just undock from the station and then you're going to want to immediately warp to your Insta Warp and because that is aligned with your undocking path, you're going to uh, immediately enter into warp because when you undock, you undock already moving. So you're just going to immediately bounce into warp and be able to get away from the station and anyone who might be there. Uh, you know, occasionally it is actually possible to get caught by 
an insta-locking war target, uh, but that also does depend on what ship you're in. If you are in a little zippy frigate, you know, you should be able to get away. Uh, yeah, but that is how we create an insta-warp and an insta-dock bookmark. Now that we have our hotkeys set up and we're comfortable with creating safes, docking and undocking, let's talk about surviving gate camps. You'll find gate camps everywhere throughout New Eden, from high sec all the way to W space. And the further out you venture, the greater the potential danger of a gate camp becomes. Your best weapon when dealing with gate camps is what is commonly called the cloak micro warp drive trick. Obviously, to do this, you're going to need to have a cloak and a micro-warp drive fitted to your ship. Just about all ships can fit these modules, and ships that are Covert Ops capable can fit the Covert Ops cloaking device, which makes this technique even more powerful. To demonstrate the cloak micro-warp drive trick, uh, I'm just going to jump through this uncamped gate here in HiSec. Uh, and this is a good way for you to basically practice doing this technique. Uh, so let's go and jump through here. Now, the reason that we do use the cloak, cloak micro warp drive trick is so that we can align whilst our ship is cloaked and therefore invulnerable. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to align to our out gate uh, and then we're going to wait about a second and hit our cloak. It is important not to hit it too early otherwise your cloak might not be able to activate because you see if I try and activate it now it says there's interference from my gate cloak basically uh, so you want to make sure that your gate cloak has deactivated so you want to leave you know about a one second count uh, but practicing this a few times will get your timing right on that uh, so we are going to as I said align hit our cloak immediately followed by our micro warp drive then we are going to wait until our cycle here is about 90-95% complete. Then we're going to deactivate our cloak and immediately spam the warp button, bouncing us straight into warp. So let's go ahead and do that now. We are aligning, cloaking and micro warp drive. And now we are just waiting for our cycle here to be about 95% complete, like I said. There we go, and let's go ahead and warp. And boom, just like that, you can see we bounce straight into warp. So let's see the cloak micro warp drive trick in action. You're going to use this technique to avoid all kinds of dangerous situations, whether it's aligning your bulky hauler under cloak whilst a suicide ganker lurks nearby, or avoiding one of the many gate camps found in the lower security regions of New Eden. But undoubtedly, the times we are going to rely on this trick the most is when you are caught in a warp disruption field. Warp disruption fields, or bubbles, prevent your ship's warp drive from operating, meaning you need to escape from the bubble before you can warp away. Bubbles can also be placed in alignment between gates or other popular warp paths where they act as drag bubbles, literally dragging your ship into their trap as you exit warp. To try and avoid bubbles, you can bounce to a celestial object like a planet or customs office before you take your outgate. This won't always work, as sometimes more meticulous campers will also place bubbles for celestials. So if you want to ensure you can always safely jump a particular gate, you'll need to create a tack for that gate. A gate tack is simply a bookmark placed at greater than 150 kilometers off from a gate and not aligned with any celestial objects. This will allow you to warp to your gate tack bookmark and safely view the gate from a distance so you can determine whether or not it's safe for you to travel through. If you do happen to jump a gate and find yourself caught in a camped bubble on the other side, don't panic, you can deal with the situation and I'm going to show you how.
The first thing that I'm going to do when I find myself caught in a bubble after jumping a gate is to start to get my bearings. I want to see how close the hostile capsuleers camping the gate are to my position, how close I am to the edge of the bubble, and are there any good points that I can align out to, hopefully escaping the bubble and getting my ship to safety. It's important to note that I'm under a 60 second gate cloak timer, which you can see counting down in the top left corner of screen. This means that I have a full minute to thoroughly assess the situation and I will use every second of that that I need to work out how I'm best going to deal with this. The hostiles camping the gate will have seen the gate activate when I came through so they will know that I'm here. At this point I have two choices. Either I try to use our trusty cloak trick and escape the bubble and warp off to safety, or I attempt to crash back to the gate that I just came through. I'm hoping that these gate campers are distracted enough to allow me to slip quietly out of the bubble and warp off. The point that I've chosen to align out to is the gate for the next system, which in hindsight may not have been the best decision as this gate could easily be camped as well and I could end up in a drag bubble and have to deal with another camp. But in the heat of the moment that's something I've overlooked so we're just going to have to hope that everything works out okay here. Thankfully the next gate is clear and I'm home and free and can continue on with my journey. The information found in this guide, as well as things covered in other parts of this series, can be found in-game at the mailing list New Bro Help. To join a mailing list, open up your Eve mail, click on the Add Mailing List button in the bottom left corner of the window, then just type the name of the list, which in this case is New Bro Help, and hit Join. You will then be added to the list and will receive a welcome mail if the mailing list has one saved. In part 5 of this series, I'm going to be covering everything that you will need to know for fitting your internet spaceship. I do hope that you will be able to join me for that video, but until then, fly dangerous.